The paralyzed Tahoe driver didn't give up until the last minute. The driver of a Camaro with two children in the car gave chase at 100 miles an hour and the driver of a Cadillac who was rushing to his mom's house. On June 6, 2024, at around 11.29 p.m., I was stationary on Interstate 40 westbound near the 282 mile marker. I could see a vehicle through my rear view mirror traveling at a high rate of speed. I activated my rear radar and clocked the SUV. I received a positive reading on the digital display of 86 miles per hour in a posted 65 mile per hour zone. As the vehicle passed me, I activated my front radar and the reading was consistent with the one in the rear. I drove from the shoulder to catch up to the beige Cadillac SUV. After exiting at Mound City, I activated my blue lights and the SUV stopped. Hey, how you doing? Up. Hey, I'm Trooper Cheers with the Arkansas State Police. The reason why I pulled the clock you're doing 86 and a 65. Yeah, I was kind of rushing. Gotcha, where are you heading to? Home. My son was rushing, my mom was calling, she was watching. Um, you know. Okay. You got your license on? I don't, sir. I left it at home. Okay. Where are you, uh, what's your name? Alright, you don't have an ID or anything on you? No, sir. Alright, do me a favor, step out and come talk to me. Alright. You step to the back of the car? Yeah. I advised him to step out of the vehicle and come talk to me. He said, oh yeah, come and talk to me, and put the SUV in gear and drove off. While north on Mound City Road, the suspect turned his lights off and began to drive recklessly, weaving across the road. As I positioned my car for a TVI, a black bag came out of the passenger window. After the vehicle was settled, a felony takedown was performed. The driver was placed in handcuffs and advised of his rights. I removed a total of $609 from Nicholas and the vehicle. During the search of the vehicle, an orange pill bottle and one clear container of marijuana. Due to my vehicle needing vehicle maintenance, after I changed the tire, I returned to the location where the bag was thrown out the window. While traveling, I observed a green Chevrolet Camaro appearing to be traveling greater than the posted speed limit of 55 miles per hour. I then activated my front opposite direction radar and clocked the vehicle traveling 89 miles per hour. I then conducted a three-point turn to turn around and pull the vehicle over. While making the turn, the vehicle accelerated and began traveling faster to avoid me. I activated my emergency lights and siren and gave chase. The suspect vehicle began to drive extremely recklessly, passing cars on the left and the right shoulder. The suspect vehicle then took the Woodson lateral exit, exit 12, traveled through the intersection, running the stop sign, and traveled onto the entrance ramp to re-enter Interstate 530 northbound. While still fleeing, I positioned my vehicle to perform a TVI, but the vehicle began to slow and started easing over to the left shoulder. Let me see your fucking hands. Put your fucking hands out. Before climbing out of the vehicle, Mr. Gray lowered his hands, 
then re-emerging them, showing me a young child in the front passenger seat. Mr. Gray climbed out the window and was arrested without further incident. With Mr. Gray in custody and placed in my patrol unit, I immediately went to tend to the child. To my surprise, there was an additional young child in the back right passenger seat. Trooper Anna Escamilla arrived on scene and assisted me with securing the children. Mr. Gray is the father of both children. A strong odor of marijuana was coming from the vehicle. While searching the vehicle, 157 grams of individually packaged clear plastic baggies were in Mr. Gray's backpack with his clothes inside. On Friday, July 7th, 2023, at approximately 10.40 p.m., I was traveling westbound on Asher Avenue when a black Tahoe passed me traveling well over the posted speed limit. I activated my emergency lights and caught up to the Tahoe on Asher Ave as we approached the intersection with University Ave. Once I caught the Tahoe, the driver, later identified as Marvin Jenkins, reduced his speed but continued traveling west on Asher. ZNC, it's a black Tahoe. Passed me at about 90, still rolling towards University. I performed a TVI by using the driver front corner of my TVI bumper to make contact with the passenger rear quarters of Jenkins' vehicle. This caused his vehicle to rotate 360 degrees clockwise and then 360 degrees counterclockwise. During the second rotation, the rear wheels of Jenkins' vehicle hit a raised curb which busted both rear tires. Uh, we're just short of 50,000 walk at all? No, sir. I'm okay. paralyzed ways down. Okay. Swing your legs out. You got to do it for me, sir. Okay. Put your phone down. Do you have any weapons in here? No, sir. I ain't got nothing in here on me, sir. I put Hold on. God, I don't. What you putting me in handcuffs for, sir? What you putting me in handcuffs for, sir? Stop. Sir, what is you, you putting me stop. in handcuffs for? You're under arrest, oh, first of all. I'm under arrest for what? Yes. Mom was taking him to the house. I was scared, Mom. Jenkins pulled into the Quick Food Mart at 5102 University, where he ended up stopping just before re-entering University Ave. I made contact with Jenkins and placed him in handcuffs without further incident. Due to Jenkins' serious medical conditions, all present prior to this incident, I figure out where we're gonna go from there, okay? You passed me going like 90 on Asher. I was not going no 90, sir. the wheel, though. Trooper Duncan made contact with staff at the Pulaski County Jail inquiring about their ability to facilitate his medical needs. Trooper Duncan obtained a written refusal for admission, which stated that they could not fulfill his medical requirements. Thank you for your time 
and have a great week.